It's okay. Do I look good? Good. Good. My future wife could be watching this. <laughs> could you imagine that? Get internet stocked by some cute blonde girl. Tall. 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 Definitely tall. tall. <laughs> Definitely tall. That's Bay Cast too. Oh. Alright, so here we go. So, hello, I'm the juice. I guess I'm not the juice anymore now that the juice is actually loose, so I'll go back to juicer. Uh, I had a good run while I lasted. Today we're going to be tying a peacock shaft tackle, and uh, this is a, a very effective fly. I'll fish this fly from size 16 knot to 22. Uh, with the good sizes kind of being in that 14 to 18 range. Um, from betas to midges, I mean it's just kind of that movie little put my mouth on your bug sort of fly, if that makes any sense to you. So we're going to start here with a little bit of uh, Olive Vivas 12 aught. This 12 aught's better than any 6 aught you can buy. I mean it's just as strong, it ties great bugs. Why would you use anything but this? I don't know. And because Peacock has a tendency to break, it's a very brittle material, we're going to tie in a little bit of wire here. Uh, it doesn't really matter what color you use. I would kind of get inventive with my colors. I'd go from chartreuse to black to, I mean this is kind of a, I think this might be sculpin olive. Um, but that wire is just a nice way to take the same fly and just make it whatever the hell you want it to be. You know, so you could take this and you could wrap a little uh, chartreuse wire through there and I bet it would make an excellent little soft tackle caddis emerger. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with that. As for the peacock, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab four strands and then I'm going to cut out a little bit of that butt material because I bought all this for like two bucks. So I'm only going to use, you know, the parts of the fiber that, you know, give me that nice full hackled looking profile. And so after I've got those, I'm going to go ahead and just tie those in like so. Wrap back to them. Um, and then this next step is actually kind of critical. So what I like to do is I rotate my vise so everything's kind of hanging down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a little peacock rope. like that and that kind of wraps your thread through there to add a layer of enforcement and then we're going to go over it with a wire so they can just chew on this and chew on this and you know what I don't even think a Labrador could wear this fly out and so we're going to put a little bit of zap on our thread base and now we're just going to wind this forward avoiding our hook point because that will for sure break your fibers when we kind of get to that right point where we've left ourselves some space, we're going to unwrap our rope. And this can be kind of tricky. There we go. We're going to tie off that cock. And a little snip. We're going to throw a dirty little whip finish with this midge whip finisher. Look at that, boom, boom. No wasted energy in that hand movement. And what's nice about it is, is I don't have to stretch out my thread as far, so if you do tie rotary, I can just slide right up in there and I don't have to do that annoying uh, 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 back in the thread back on. And so now we're gonna come through, we're gonna just wrap this wire in there, make it a little bit more durable. Durability is key. We're going to helicopter our wire out, break it off, and now time for the hackle. And for the hackle on these soft hackles, you can use partridge, you could use cheap hen neck, but one thing I found that I really like are these whiting, these whiting hen hackle, you know, these big nice capes. And there are a lot of things you can do with them. Don't allow the 1995 price tag you know, to persuade you from purchasing this awesome material. It's, you know, the same quality you'd expect out of their hackle, you know, their rooster hackle, only in, you know, feminine form. We're going to take this little butt here, the kind of marabouy part, and we're going to snip that out and save these. These are really handy. Just throw them in a cup and save them. 
All right. And so to tie in this hackle, you can either strip it, or what I like to do is I actually like to cut the barbs away and give me just that little bit like that. And what that affords me the ability to do is kind of, you know, it, it creates kind of just some texture for your thread to bind into. All right, we're going to tie that in kind of off angle on the top of the hook. Wrap that nice and tight. Oh, shit, it rolled on me. Happens and they will roll on you and the key to mitigating that is to just kind of tilt it even more when you wrap when you tie it in like so get in there kind of come behind got it tied in nice and tight just to make sure what are we gonna do BAM and now we're just gonna take one and two wraps and so I've played with this fly a lot this spring and I fished it on you know two-handed rods and single-handed rods and the most fun I've actually had with this pattern is I tied it in an 18 actually a 20 I lied to you a 20 on a 200 R and I was fishing it behind my buzz ball and when I get to the end of my reach cast where it would kind of start to drag, I'd, I'd literally just let it swing out under my buzz ball and that tri is waking on the surface and these fish are coming up and just mowing this soft tackle. It was a lot of fun during a heavy Mitch hatch and anybody could do that. I mean literally anybody could have caught a fish doing that. I even had two guys in the parking lot ask me what I was doing that was so successful and he said anybody can do it. Anybody can fly fish. We're gonna come in, we're gonna make a nice whip finish with that midge whip finisher. How beautiful. Bam! Peacock soft tackle. Shout out to uh, Bob. <laughs>